say that we're just going to go in to Pakistan. It is a sovereign nation, and we need to be very careful and work with them specifically on intelligence and on developing military operations together. But we cannot go in as a tough guy into Pakistan okay. and, and do Thank it. you very much. Ms. Jenkins, you have 60 seconds on that question. National security is job one for our federal government. And as long as there are crazy people in the world, people that will strap bombs on their bodies, whether it's in Afghanistan or Iraq or Pakistan, I want our government to protect us. And these kinds of battles are battles you do not want the home field advantage on. So I will always support a strong national security and our men and women and listen to the generals on the ground for their advice and counsel on what they best ad advise. Um, I don't think Ms. Boyda or I have any expertise in prosecuting a war, so we might want to listen. We're going to continue with you on this next question, which is energy, Ms. Jenkins. What proposals would you support to increase American energy independence? You have 90 seconds. Um, I think there's no doubt we need to cease being reliant on foreign sources of oil, <coughs> and there is an all-of-the-above solution that could accomplish that. And I'm speaking of a plan that um, actually the Congresswoman talked a lot about recently in a 16-page insert when she was back on our five-week vacation earlier. Um, it's to increase domestic drilling. We have resources off the coast, in the Gulf, up in Anwar. That's not going to be enough. In addition to that, we need to look at alternative renewable resources. We have some of those right here in the great state of Kansas, wind, solar, nuclear, clean coal. In addition to that, I think we need to provide some incentives to automobile manufacturers to produce fuel-efficient vehicles. And of course, we all need to do our part in conservation. Um, but the, the most troubling part was after the Congresswoman was home um, sponsoring this bipartisan bill that was very similar to what I just described. She went back to Washington and voted no on that bill. I think that's a crying shame. She ch chose instead to vote for a highly partisan bill crafted by her Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. And we are continuing to feel the pain at the pump every day because of it. You have 90 seconds to respond on the energy question, Ms. Boyda. Yes, I proudly worked with a group in, uh, in, in the evenings in Cannon, the Cannon Office Building to craft a bipartisan compromise, and it did come in to be one of the things that was considered. It's part of a negotiation process. You don't just bring something and say, we've got this done, and now it's going to happen. I think we all agree, Lynn and I and probably everybody in this room, that we have to increase the supply of energy certainly starting with domestic oil and gas, renewables, and conservation. So we've got that much. We've all, we all agree with that. So I know everybody's wondering, why can't we get that done? Everybody agrees. Why aren't we getting that done? Ultimately, the rub comes down to those, uh, those subsidies to the big oil companies. We have taken five votes, very, very clear votes, <coughs> that says we should, we should reduce those subsidies and redirect those to the renewable energies that will make Kansas, the Kansas economy, just bloom. And yet, every time, those, those bills have gone straight down party lines. Every time. It's the one thing that we can, and what, Lynn, I would ask, I don't think you've taken a position, and I would very much appreciate it if you would, do you think a lot of these subsidies come from the fact that the oil companies are not paying royalties on many of these leases? on federal lands, and they're not paying the tax dollars royalties. Do you think that they should be paying royalties? And will you break with your party? Because that's where the rub is. Everybody agrees. They want to know why nothing is happening. And Lynn, I came back for five weeks to spend right here in Kansas working with the people of Kansas. Okay. But uh, I don't, uh, before moving on to another topic, you do get a right to respond, at least for a minute here, uh, Ms. Jenkins, to, that, uh, to some of the questions posed by your uh, opponent, if you'd like to. Um, While well, she's talking about raising taxes, no, I oppose any tax increase. I don't think the federal government needs more of our tax money. Um, I think the whole problem in Washington is they're spending too much of it. And I think we're paying members of Congress to go to Washington to solve some of the major issues of the day. And I expect results, and I've seen nothing. I was the first one to criticize my own party for not getting results. And I'm going to be one of the first ones criticizing um, the Democrat Party right now for having spent two years and producing nothing. 
Okay, you have 60 seconds before we move on to new territory, Ms. Boyda. This goes into a broader issue, too. I talk about subsidies to the oil companies. These are royalties that they're paying virtually no, or, or leases that they're paying virtually no royalties on. I don't know, I would love to, we've got an audience here. I don't, there is no one that I talk to that thinks that the oil companies should get away with this scot-free. It's about $14 billion, and yet that's spun into that's a tax increase. And Lynn, you've taken this pledge to say you'll never do any tax increases. You want people right here to believe that you mean you won't increase their taxes. And I think we all agree, I'm going to do everything I can to fight for note for more tax relief for you. We've talked about that. But that gets spun into, now you're saying that you won't, and this is the partisan why nothing gets done in Washington, because enough of these people have taken these crazy pledges, and then they turn and say, if I charge royalties, that must be a tax increase. I can't vote for it because of this pledge that I've taken. So at least I appreciate the fact that you've finally taken a position on that, and we know that you will not increase royalties on our, on our oil, okay. on oil companies. You so can have your questions answered by the candidates when you <laughs> call the number at the bottom of your screen, one 800 866 5898. We go on to the back to the economy, and it starts with you, Ms. Boyder. And this is jobs. Both of your websites talk about creating good jobs. But if you are elected again to another two year term in the Kansas Second District, can you name me one specific economic policy you will champion in Congress that would actually promote the creation of jobs? I'll say three, if I may, just quickly. One is certainly dealing with trade issues. I'm all for trade, but these, the free trade agreements that we've gotten have shipped jobs overseas. We've talked about that so much, I don't think I need to go into it again. But yeah, we can do something about the trade agreements. We can absolutely, I have the endorsement of the National Federation of Independent Businesses. This is not what you would call in, in a very liberal group, by the way. <laughs> They're pretty conservative. And we come in and we, 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 we have tax policies and policies that help those independent businesses. They create 80, 90 percent of our jobs. We can do that. And then what will help right here in Kansas is taking on, go back to those tax subsidies for the oil companies. I believe in pay go, pay as you go so that we do something for our deficit. So when we, when we need the tax subsidies for the whole greening here that will do so many things right here in Kansas, what do we do? We take those subsidies, that $14 billion dollars, for the, for the royalties, basically, and we redirect that into green jobs right here in Kansas. So there is so much that we can do, but we're just in gridlock right now, a lot of it because people have dug in their heels and told us what they're not going to do instead of what they are going to do. 90 seconds, Ms. Jenkins. Um, for job creation and uh, helping the economy, I think job one is to keep a low tax structure. Um, business is the lifeblood. They create the jobs. We need to do everything we can to be business friendly. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was really troubled when the Congresswoman voted for the largest tax increase in American history. Um, when she voted for budgets that dismantle the 2001-2003 tax relief. Um, just last week there was a proposal to um, make a fix for the AMT that affects the middle class, probably it targets the middle class more than any. And she was one of, I think, only 30 in the entire United States House that voted no for that relief. And um, in addition to tax relief, we need to um, obviously promote free markets, free trade, and do everything we can to create jobs. And um, I'm delighted as well to have the support of businesses in our area. Um, I have the endorsement of the United States Chamber of Commerce. Ms. Jenkins, on your website you have the national debt clock that's ticking away. Is it a trillion dollars? I think $32,000 for every man, woman, and child. You want to lower taxes. We have a war in Iraq. We have defense spending, a massive financial bailout that will cost billions. How do you then propose decreasing the federal deficit? You have 90 seconds on that question. Well, I think I said earlier, the last thing we need to do is raise taxes on folks when the economy is in the situation that it is today. And that's what the current congressman or congresswoman has voted to do. And these are tax increases on all of us. You know, if we have any parents of children living at home in the crowd, if we have married people, farmers, small business people, 
those are the folks affected by this tax package that will kick back in in 2010. Um, it's not the tax side of the ledger that's the problem. It's the spending side. And while I was disappointed with my own party, I am appalled that we sent new faces to Washington two years ago, and they have made the problem even worse. If everyone asked for pork barrel spending projects at the rate that our congresswoman did, there would be $88 billion every year spent on vanity projects. Now, I support projects that have a federal purpose, supporting our military, men and women, roads and bridges, our infrastructure. But I will not, as our current congresswoman did, support on straight up or down votes things like a Mule and Packers Museum and $2 million for Chuck Wrangell's Public Policy Institute, where he's got a personal museum and a personal office. That's what's the wrong with Washington, D.C. So we hear from your opponent that you're making things worse, Ms. Boyd. What have you done in the first two years that you've been in Congress to lower the deficit, and what would you do if you were returned to Congress? Well, let me just answer a couple of things here, too. Um, First of all, if you happen to go to YouTube and put in the words Len Jenkins, what you'll see is any attack ads from the primary about how much, how much you raise taxes, which is, you know, at that time was said, oh, you said it was a distortion, a distortion. It's these third parties that are coming in and distorting the truth. Now, the same third parties that are trying to come in and, and, and talk about me, uh, you're fairly silent on it. It's, it's kind of an odd thing. But uh, the, the so-called largest tax increase in, in history They've tried that over and over and over again. The Lawrence Journal World, Harris News, FactCheck.com has basically said, that's just not true. But it doesn't stop. If you want to repeat it over and over again, um, I, I would say that's, that's, that's what you want to do. Clearly, the question that you asked was about the deficit. And clearly, you got no answer whatsoever about what we're really going to do on the deficit. Let me just say on, on all of those, um, on those, um, those earmarks, all four members of Congress from Kansas voted for those. Jerry Moran, Todd Tehart, Dennis Moore, and Nancy Boyd all voted for those, Lynn. It's a procedure. I'll explain it to you when, when we can. Um, but it's, it is a procedure. And we have Pat Roberts Hall right here in Kansas. So I would, you know, I've said I will never get anything. I don't want any highway or any water treatment plant on either side of the tap named after me. Thank you very much. But I, there is a difference between us. If our communities come to me, and they do, and they say, can you help us with the wastewater treatment plant? Can you help us with agricultural research? And that's where we need to stop you uh, there. I know you've got other things to say. But the next question goes to you before we move to our audience questions and your questions from home by your phone calls using the number at the bottom of your screen. We move to immigration, Ms. Boyd. The next session of Congress will likely reevaluate again the nation's uh, immigration laws. What principles, in your view, should guide congressional action on immigration policy? You have 90 seconds. I think we, sir, we have a lot of problems in our country. Um, energy, health care, immigration. Immigration is actually one of the more doable issues that we can deal with right now and the, one of the more common sense things that we can do. Everyone agrees that we need to have an employer verification system and we need to get that going now. Um, but it's stuck in Congress. I have been part of uh, a very bipartisan group that has come together with what's called the SAVE Act that does three things. It says we're going to fix the E-Verify, the employment verification system. It also says we're going to beef up security at the border, and we're also going to build some detention beds. We have people all over the country that are, 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 are detained, but there's no place to put them. So we're working on that. Um, I did something that was very, very, very difficult, and that was to sign what's called the discharge petition meaning I went right against my party and said, I think this should be brought to the floor immediately. We're about 18 members uh, on both houses, on both sides of that short. This is one that we can come together and do something about. Now, what have I done? I've actually been extremely careful with my language. When somebody talks to me about immigration, I'll say, here's what I think, but please don't send me any hateful emails about any group of God's children. Okay, the rhetoric has gotten so hateful sometimes that that's pulling people apart. And I've let both sides of this issue know that I've been very careful to make sure that those relationships, and I'm there and, and are actually brokering some of these conversations behind the scenes. We need to do something about this now. Thank you. Lynn Jenkins, 90 seconds. 
Well, I find it interesting that by the Congresswoman's own admission, everyone agrees on this, and it seems like a very simple solution, and yet <laughs> Republicans failed us on this issue, and Democrats have had two